As the Denkun upgrade draws near, Ethereum's Layer 2s are about to take off. That's why, in today's video, we'll be taking a close look at some Layer 2 projects, how they'll be supercharged by Denkun, and what this could mean for your portfolio. So, if you hold any Layer 2s, or are considering picking some up, then this is a video you have to watch till the end. Before we go on, there's something that needs to be said. I'm not a financial advisor, so get that out of your head. I'm here to educate, helping you navigate your crypto journey ahead. So please contact a financial advisor if your portfolio is in the red. There's also something else you should know. I hold most of these tokens as part of my personal portfolio. In fact, many of us do here at Coin Bureau. Fear not, though, we'll keep this unbiased as we go. Transparency and education are our MO. And hey, if you're looking to trade and reduce what you pay, you'll be pleased to know we've provided a way. The Coin Bureau deals page is below this display with sign up bonuses of up to 50K. There's also trading fee discounts to help keep those costs at bay. Right, with that out of the way, there's only one thing left to do. So let's take a closer look at some great Ethereum Layer 2s. OK, with that out of the way, let's quickly recap what the Denkun upgrade actually is. Note that we recently did a very thorough deep dive into Denkun, and I'll, of course, leave a link to that video in the description. For now, though, here's the TLDR. Denkun is a data availability upgrade that introduces proto-dank sharding to Ethereum. Now, proto-dank sharding is the first step towards, well, actual dank sharding, which is the method that Ethereum will use to break its blockchain into smaller portions, or shards, which can process transactions faster and cheaper than Ethereum can currently. In order to set the stage for dank sharding, proto-dank sharding acts as a precursor, introducing something called data blobs. These blobs are like attachments to normal data blocks, with both being processed together. Without getting too technical, Ethereum won't see any changes to the Layer 1 main chain, at least not directly anyway. You'll have to watch that aforementioned video to understand just what I mean. Instead, the main beneficiary of Denkun will be Ethereum's Layer 2 ecosystem, specifically roll-up solutions. Denkun will bring cheaper fees and faster transactions to these Layer 2s. This scalability is what will help Ethereum itself in the long run, as once dank sharding comes later down the line, Ethereum will see exponential efficiency improvements. These are very much needed, as despite Ethereum being a crypto titan, it's been struggling lately to keep up with the rest of the market. This is in large part due to it being slower and more expensive than other Layer 1 rivals, such as Solana. And incidentally, we also did a video recently comparing these two layer ones, and the link for that is also down below. Anywho, if Ethereum is going to keep up with its competitors, scaling needs to come, and soon. For perspective, Ethereum can currently process around 15 transactions per second, whereas Visa can currently process around 24,000 transactions per second. So just a little catching up to do then. This highlights exactly why Denkun will be so bullish for Ethereum Layer 2s. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some, shall we? OK, our first Layer 2 in the spotlight is Arbitrum. Now, Arbitrum is an optimistic roll-up scaling solution which allows for increased throughput and reduced fees for Ethereum transactions. Now, for reference, roll-up solutions will, well, roll up transactions into one bundle and then process that bundle away from the Ethereum Layer 1 chain. The transactions are then executed off-chain while assets are held in a smart contract on-chain. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, show it by smashing those like and subscribe buttons. Now, optimistic rollups are one of several variants of this scaling method. They are optimistic in the sense that they use a trust based model to verify transactions with the optimistic presumption that the data sent back to the main blockchain by validators is legitimate. 
Validators check this data during a challenge period, which is typically a one-week window. Challenge periods are where validator nodes can submit a fraud proof if they find transactions that seem a bit sketchy. Notably, this one-week challenge period means you must wait one week to withdraw any crypto you have on an optimistic layer 2 to the Ethereum blockchain. Anyhow, Arbitrum was created in 2019 by Offchain Labs, a New York-based development company founded by Ed Felton, Stephen Goldfeder, and Harry Kolodner, all three of whom are former Princeton University researchers. These three giga nerds each have years of experience in computer science, cryptography, and blockchain, with Ed even once serving as President Obama's CTO. Now that is quite a resume. Arbitrum was soft-launched in May 2021, receiving lots of attention from developers right off the bat. As of July 2021, Arbitrum already had around 300 active dApps. Arbitrum's mainnet, Arbitrum 1, was then launched a few months later on the 31st of August 2021. Arbitrum then released ARB, its native governance token, around 18 months later in March 2023. ARB was initially airdropped to early users and DAOs that interacted with the Arbitrum network. Now, Arbitrum consists of several features alongside the main Arbitrum 1 chain. One of these is the Arbitrum Nitro tech stack, which developers can leverage to build Orbit chains. Orbit chains are essentially other chains that are launched on the Arbitrum network. This is why Orbit chains are commonly referred to as Layer 3s. Another key feature is Arbitrum Nova, which is itself an Orbit chain that leverages any trust technology as its scaling solution. Arbitrum Nova is faster, cheaper, and more scalable than Arbitrum 1, with the trade-off of it being more centralized and therefore less secure. Where Arbitrum 1 is seen as a better option for general purpose use, Nova is more suited for more specific niches like blockchain gaming, NFTs, and social media. As a fun fact, Nova was used by Reddit for its community points, namely Moons, on the r slash cryptocurrency subreddit. Now, another of Arbitrum's key features, meanwhile, is its developer environment, Stylus. Stylus plays a huge part in Arbitrum's ecosystem expansion, as it allows devs to build using whichever programming language they prefer. For reference, most Ethereum applications are written in Solidity, whereas projects built on other layer ones use other languages such as Python, Rust, C, or C++. With Stylus, it doesn't matter which coding language you have experience in. If you primarily build using Rust, you don't then need to learn Solidity before deploying to Arbitrum. Basically, everyone is welcome. And speaking of building, Arbitrum 1 has some very popular DeFi projects currently building on its ecosystem, including Aave, OneInch, Uniswap, SushiSwap, Synthetix, and Curve Finance. Nova, on the other hand, has some interesting projects such as Babylon's NFT marketplace, the Layer Zero Bridge, Frontworld, and Legend of Eros. At the time of shooting, Arb has a market cap of over $2.6 billion and ranks 40th on coin market cap. It has a total supply of 10 billion, with around 1.2 billion ARB currently in circulation. Arbitrum has a total value locked, or TVL, of $12.4 billion, which rather impressively makes up for just under half of all TVL across all Layer 2s combined. Now, ARB recently hit an all-time high of $2.40 on the 12th of January and hasn't really shown many signs of slowing down either in large part due to the anticipated effects of Dengkun. This is because Dengkun's impact on Layer 2 transaction speeds and costs will likely see more and more people adopting Arbitrum as an even cheaper way of interacting with Ethereum. Now, blockchain gaming and social media have been in the minds of many investors as leading bull market narratives. When Dengkun increases Nova's efficiency, the games built upon it will be more stabilized and robust, improving the overall user experience. And when this happens, developers can then turn their focus to improving the games themselves. Better games means more players, which means more adopters, which means more cash inflows, which means more funding for developing even better games. You get the point. 
So it's safe to say then that Arbitrum is set to benefit massively from Dengkun. But what about its competitors? Well, this brings us to arguably Arbitrum's main competitor, Optimism. As you'll have no doubt gathered from the name, Optimism is another optimistic roll-up solution with similar technology to Arbitrum's. Optimism was actually the first Layer 2 scaling solution to implement optimistic roll-ups. Now, the main difference here is that where Arbitrum uses a multi-round fraud-proof system to authenticate transactions, Optimism only uses a single round. This in turn makes Optimism inherently faster. As mentioned earlier, Arbitrum's fraud-proof system takes transactions away from the Layer 1 to be processed, whereas Optimism only makes transactions faster on Ethereum. This means that although transaction finality is improved, it doesn't have any impact on gas fees. Put differently, Optimism is faster but more expensive, whereas Arbitrum is slower but more cost-effective. And there are other differences too. For instance, Optimism leverages the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM, whereas Arbitrum has its own custom version, the AVM. Anyway, Optimism was founded in 2019 by Carl Flersch, a former Ethereum Foundation researcher, Jinglang Wang, a key contributor to the optimistic roll-up solution, and Kevin Ho, a computer science engineer. The OP token was launched in June of 2022 in the midst of a brutal bear market. And price action at launch was, to be blunt, shambolic. The main reason for this was an airdrop of OP tokens that saw some users receive their tokens before others, causing airdrop recipients to race and sell their allocations as soon as they could. The result was an instant price drop of around 83%. And it wasn't just price that was affected either. The Optimism network received that much activity that it actually jammed. So, not a great start. Happily, things have picked up massively since then. Optimism has since developed into a key project within Ethereum's Layer 2 ecosystem, and OP's price has recovered in kind. OP has a market cap of $3.65 billion at the time of shooting, ranking 30th on CMC. It has a total supply of 4.3 billion, with around 950 million tokens in circulation. As recently as the 12th of January, OP hit an all-time high of $4.23, and with the momentum we're seeing around Layer 2s at the moment, in anticipation of Denkun, it's quite possible that figure has been surpassed by the time you watch this video. OP is used as a governance token for the Optimism Collective DAO, allowing OP holders to vote on things like governance and public goods spending. Now, on the 6th of June last year, Optimism implemented its biggest upgrade to date, the Bedrock Hard Fork. This upgrade had many benefits, including cutting transaction fees by an impressive 40% and deposit confirmation times from 10 minutes to less than one minute. Bedrock also improved the proof modularity for its OP stack, a software development toolkit that allows devs to launch their own Layer 2 blockchains. These proof modularity improvements mean that these L2s can either use optimistic rollups or zero-knowledge proof rollups, commonly referred to as ZK proofs. More about those later. This means that, thanks to Bedrock, Optimism became the first Layer 2 running on a multi-client system. This has significant security benefits. If one client has a serious bug, the network will simply switch to another in order to keep running, significantly reducing network downtime. Other bedrock benefits include improved node performance and Ethereum equivalence. Now, for reference, equivalence and compatibility are similar but equivalence is the better option, as it requires a minimal amount of coding changes to run on the Ethereum mainnet. After Bedrock, Optimism laid out its ambitious plans to become a superchain, which is essentially a network of all the Layer 2s built using the OP stack, working in unison to achieve true Ethereum scalability. In fact, Optimism recently changed its name to the OP mainnet to reflect this superchain vision. As Optimism explains on its website, quote, 
If Ethereum is to rival the Goliaths of Web2 and take software's next bite of the world, it needs to be internet-level scale. No single chain today can offer that. Now, the super chain may sound a little outlandish until you realize that one of the first entrants to the super chain ecosystem was none other than Coinbase's very own Layer 2 solution, Base. And you can learn more about Base using the link in the description. I digress. Now, this super chain could quickly become a reality after Deng Kuhn. This is because the different roll-up solutions leveraging the OP stack will have the shared benefits of increasing data handling efficiency. Each individual Layer 2 roll-up solution being boosted is one thing, but combining these benefits into one overall master network? Now that could be something spectacular. OK, another Layer 2 that stands to benefit from Deng Kuhn is immutable. Now, while nobody can say for sure which narrative will be the one driving the upcoming bull market, many speculative eyes are on GameFi. Determining exactly which blockchain game will perform best is pretty difficult, but placing your bets on the underlying infrastructure could be a safer option. A gaming-focused blockchain will need to focus on scalability, quality, and above all else, user experience. And this is exactly what Immutable aims to achieve. Created by brothers James and Robbie Ferguson, along with Alex Connolly, Immutable started out in 2018 as Fuel Games, before rebranding to Immutable in 2019. James, Robbie, and Alex were students at the University of Sydney, studying computer science before dropping out to launch their project. Immutable presented a solution to Ethereum's high transaction fees by offering a highly scalable alternative, featuring a better user experience that offers instant trading and zero gas fees on minting or trading NFTs, all while leveraging the security of the Ethereum network. Immutable now boasts a collection of 150-plus games and over 20 marketplaces, and some impressive partnerships with the likes of Amazon Web Services, Polygon, Ubisoft, and GameStop, to name a few. Immutable's infrastructure consists of two key components, the Immutable ZK EVM and Immutable X. Immutable ZK EVM is the first of its kind. According to its website, quote, it's a blockchain for games that offers EVM compatibility, low cost, massive scale, and Ethereum security. Powered by Polygon, the Immutable ZK EVM allows gamers to enjoy advanced, high-quality gameplay whilst also paying zero gas fees. Meanwhile, Immutable X is the name for the optimized game-specific ZK roll-up tech. It's built for high-performance games, streamlined gameplay mechanics, and it allows devs to mint an entire NFT collection completely for free. Now, Immutable's TPS is already quite impressive, even before Deng Kuhn. According to the Immutable X page, quote, while Ethereum can only comfortably handle roughly 15 transactions per second, Immutable X's throughput capabilities are over 600 times more efficient. A bit of quick maths will tell you that this brings Immutable X's transaction speed to 9,000 TPS. At the time of shooting, IMX has a market cap of $4.5 billion, ranking 22nd on CMC. It has a total supply of 2 billion, with over 1.3 billion IMX currently in circulation. Immutable itself has a TVL of $271 million, accounting for just over 1% of the overall Layer 2 market share. IMX's all-time high was $9.50 back in the euphoria of November 2021. Ah, memories. Since then, though, IMX's price action has been pretty stagnant, like that of many other alts on the market, for that matter. It wasn't until October 2023 that IMX began to wake from its slumber. And again, this was likely due to the anticipation around Deng Kuhn. Similar to Arbitrum's impact, Immutable could see a rapid acceleration in blockchain gaming development as network efficiency is supercharged. With Immutable being positioned as a big player in the GameFi narrative, many more gaming devs will be turning their attentions to the best environment to launch their products in, and Immutable will be a top contender in that regard. And, as said earlier, 
Better infrastructure means higher adoption and increased inflows. Now, you may recall that the immutable ZK EVM is powered by Polygon, and that brings us very nicely to our next layer two, which is, of course, Polygon itself. Polygon is a project that was first conceived as Matic Network back at a time when the Ethereum mainnet faced heavy congestion thanks to the CryptoKitties NFTs. This congestion caused Ethereum's users to pay some blisteringly high fees. Bad kitties. This is something that Jayanthi Kanani, a data scientist in India, saw as an opportunity for improvement. He contacted Sandeep Naowal, a blockchain developer, and Anirag Arjun, a business consultant. Together, they drafted the Matic Network white paper in 2017. In 2019, Matic Network sold 1.9 billion Matic tokens in order to raise the funds needed to develop the project on the Binance launchpad. Then, during Q2 of 2020, the Matic Network itself was launched. Initially, the Matic Network ran as a plasma chain. Now, explaining plasma chains can be a little confusing, but a very brief overview is as follows. Plasma chains are essentially child chains that take some of the mainnet's data and then send it to their own child chains. These secondary child chains act like a sublayer to the plasma chain. The plasma chain will then send information back from these child chains to the mainnet to boost its data handling. FYI, a child chain is a separate blockchain that's linked to the main chain and used to handle certain transactions or operations in order to reduce the load on the main chain. Anyhow, Matic Network rebranded to Polygon in February 2021 and added Mihailo Bielic to its team as an additional co-founder. This name change represented a switch in Polygon's focus, switching from developing plasma chains to expanding Polygon services, including the use of multiple scaling solutions. Now, Polygon's flagship solution is its proof-of-stake chain, known as Polygon POS. According to its website, quote, the network has tens of thousands of dApps, more than 3 million average daily transactions, $5 billion in secured assets, and some of the top brands building on it. Impressive stuff. Now, technically speaking, Polygon POS isn't actually a layer two. It's a sidechain. As the name suggests, sidechains run alongside the main chain, taking some of the transaction data from the layer one mainnet and using their own resources to offload some of the work. The data taken from Ethereum is processed using smart contracts on Polygon's virtual machine. Now, the POS chain works very similar to Ethereum, but is much faster and cheaper. Polygon's website claims to have, quote, approximately 10,000x lower costs per transaction than Ethereum, with an average transaction fee of less than two cents. Now, this efficiency is the reason Polygon has stayed consistently within the top 15 crypto projects by market cap. At the time of shooting, Polygon is sitting in 14th place on CMC with a market cap of over $8.8 billion. It has a maximum supply of 10 billion tokens, of which 9.6 billion are already in circulation. Notably, Polygon's token still uses the ticker MATIC. However, MATIC will change its name to POL with the next phase of Polygon's roadmap, the highly anticipated Polygon 2.0. Matic hit an all-time high of $2.92 on the 27th of December 2021. At the time of shooting, it's still 66% down from this price point. However, this could all change with 2.0. More on that in just a moment. Now, you may have seen that Jessica recently interviewed one of Polygon's co-founders, Sandeep Naowal. If you haven't already seen it, it's a fascinating discussion and well worth a listen. Without spoiling too much here, Jessica asks Sandeep how he thinks the upcoming Denkun upgrade will affect Polygon. Sandeep's answer was basically not by much. This is because, in his words, quote, the design space is already there for providing low gas fees and fast transactions. Intriguing. You'll have to watch the whole interview to find out Sandeep's complete reasoning for this, as well as his take on Denkun's overall impact on layer two roll-up solutions. The link is below. 
Now, that being said, Polygon could see some major developments with the introduction of the aforementioned Polygon 2.0. Polygon 2.0 aims to establish a network of zero-knowledge powered chains that are united by a cross-chain coordination protocol. This protocol has been dubbed by Polygon as the value layer of the internet. Polygon 2.0 brings some key benefits to the table. It allows for Ethereum-enabled qualities, meaning Polygon can leverage Ethereum's security and finality. It's developer-friendly, extensively supporting EVM functionality, which results in the increased onboarding of new developers. And Polygon 2.0 takes full advantage of Ethereum's deep liquidity and decentralization benefits. It is worth noting, however, that Polygon 2.0 has yet to be tested by real-world users. This means that any successes, or failures for that matter, remain to be seen. And Polygon's ambitions to improve scalability, interoperability, and security are not too dissimilar to Optimism's vision of a superchain. In fact, on the 24th of January, Polygon Labs announced the AgLayer, an aggregation of Layer 1 and 2 chains that are designed to run in unison to feel like one overall network. Logically, then, the benefits of Denkun seen on the AgLayer would be equally similar to those seen by Optimism's superchain an increased level of scalability across the board, which, when combined, will boost the overall efficiency of this master network. Now, while the Polygon POS is technically not a layer two, Polygon also has a solution that is, and that's the Polygon ZK EVM. The ZK EVM, which stands for Zero Knowledge Ethereum Virtual Machine, is a layer two scaling solution that's equivalent to the EVM itself. This equivalence is important to highlight as it isn't the same as Ethereum compatibility. For reference, compatible services can be seen as something that can be designed to plug into the Ethereum mainnet, but require special coding to allow this to happen. Equivalence, on the other hand, is more of a copy of Ethereum's code. This means that the vast majority of already existing smart contracts, dApps, developer tools, and wallets on Ethereum will work seamlessly with Polygon, with minimal coding changes needed, if any. Polygon claims that its ZK EVM is the leading scaling solution that features this equivalence, and the performance and security of the protocol will play a big part in Ethereum's scalability. It also claims that the ZK EVM has better finality times than other Layer 2 solutions, including optimistic rollups. And the ZK EVM has some of its own key benefits. One of these is the low costs for transactions for end users, which aims to improve the overall user experience. Another is its high performance with fast finality times and a great variety of dApps tailored to a multitude of use cases. According to its website, Polygon states that the use of its zero tech makes it the fastest zero knowledge proof in the world. As mentioned earlier, the ZK EVM features full EVM equivalence, meaning that devs can easily deploy onto the network and can concentrate on improving their code rather than rewriting it. And most importantly, the ZK EVM benefits from an increased level of network security. This is because it inherits the security of the Ethereum mainnet with the additional benefit of batching transactions. On top of this, data stored on the network cannot be changed or corrupted. The TVL for Polygon ZK EVM is just over $147 million, and the average gas price is around 65 cents. What's important to remember here, though, is that it's still in beta mode. This only makes the protocol's achievements that much more impressive, and it'll be fascinating to see how it will develop and improve over time. This is where Denkun's impact could really make a difference. Because while 65 cents isn't bad when compared to the mainnet, there's still a lot of room for improvement here. With the ZK EVM serving as a roll-up solution, it's in prime position to take advantage of cheaper data handling, increased transaction speeds, and further improvements to the overall UX. Now, there are many other Layer 2 protocols out there, and indeed, some that have yet to launch. This latter group includes the ASTAR ZK EVM, 
which is a ZK roll-up solution leveraging Polygon's CDK. Then there's the BOB protocol, which stands for Build on Bitcoin and which uses Optimism's OP roll-up stack to natively support Bitcoin transactions for things like ordinals, inscriptions, and Bitcoin's dApps. Another, meanwhile, is Frame, which leverages Arbitrum's Nitro technology to help scale NFT adoption in the Ethereum ecosystem. And there's Aztec, a standalone open source layer 2 network that brings programmable privacy and scalability to Ethereum. Now, I should point out that these projects were selected at random from a list of 36 upcoming layer 2s, according to the L2Beat website. I'll leave a link to this list below for you to take a closer look if you wish. That said, these all have one thing in common. They will immediately inherit the benefits of Denkun right off the bat. Whereas many other existing Layer 2 projects have had to work towards lower fees and higher transaction speeds, Denkun means that half this battle has already been won before these newcomers have even stepped onto the field. Make no mistake, already existing Layer 2s will benefit, but brand new Layer 2 projects offering some new innovations could see explosive adoption, with potential gains that have, until now, been perhaps unprecedented. And that's all for today's video, folks. But what do you think? Do you have your eyes on any other Layer 2s? Do you think Denkun's impact will be as disruptive as expected, or a bit of a nothing burger? Let us know in the comments. We always love hearing from you. And while you're down there, why not smash that like button and subscribe to the channel? Also, be sure to ping that notification bell so you don't miss our next release. And if this video has inspired you to stock up on some of those Layer 2 tokens, then be sure to check out the Coin Bureau deals page. There, you'll find trading fee discounts of up to 60% and sign-up bonuses of up to $50,000 on some of the best crypto exchanges. The link to that page can be found below. And if you want to find some of the best crypto clothing out there, then be sure to check out the Coin Bureau merch store. Link for that is also in the description. OK, thank you so much all for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Guy, signing off. Thank you.